Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. In the context of Russia's war on Ukraine, the European Commission has proposed to set up a short-term joint procurement instrument as a first step to address the most urgent and critical defense capability gaps. Want to know more? Stay with us. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has altered the geopolitical situation in Europe dramatically and confronted EU countries with its own shortcomings in defence capabilities and budgets. Since the first day of the invasion, the EU has committed itself to support Ukraine, including in the military field. For the first time ever, EU member states agreed to jointly finance the provision of lethal weapons to a country at war namely Ukraine, with funding from the European Peace Facility. With war raging on its doorstep, European countries know that time has come to boost their own capabilities and close the industrial, investment and capabilities gaps that have for so long ailed EU defence. Following the mandate given by EU leaders at the Versailles summit in March 2022, the European Commission presented a defence investment gap analysis in May 2022, proposing the creation of a short-term procurement instrument, IDIRPA, to address defence-related investment, capability and industrial gaps. Worth 500 million euros. IDIRPA seeks to address the most urgent and critical defence capability gaps and to incentivise member states to procure defence products jointly. The European Commissioner responsible for the internal market, Thierry Breton, didn't hesitate to qualify it as an historical step forward for EU defence. The Commission has answered the call made by EU heads of state and government in Versailles in March 2022 to move European cooperation in defence forward. It's in this context that today we present this new instrument to support the joint procurement of weapons at European level and using the European budget. It's a historical step forward for EU defence. So what's the idea? Well, the idea behind it is to encourage EU countries in a spirit of solidarity to procure defence products together. The instrument would ensure greater value for money, greater interoperability and reduce market fragmentation. By preventing EU countries from bidding against each other, the new instrument would also facilitate access to defence products, especially for those most exposed to the new security environment and the Russian threat. It will also allow the European defence technological and industrial base to better adjust and ramp up its manufacturing capacities to deliver the necessary weapons and equipment. But what type of actions will be pursued with the new instrument? It will support actions from consortia composed of at least three member states and either involve new defence procurement projects or the extension of those launched since the start of the war. The new instrument will complement the European Defence Fund in the sense that while this already enables EU countries to collectively design and build new arms and equipment, the new joint procurement instrument will allow them to collectively acquire what they have built together, or off-the-shelf equipment. It's also designed to complement EU defence initiatives such as the Permanent Structured Cooperation, which already allows 25 EU member states to deepen their defence cooperation, and the implementation of the Strategic Compass, which is a concrete plan of action for the EU security and defence for the coming years. So, what are the next steps? Well, given the urgency of the matter, the Commission hoped to reach an agreement by the end of last year. But we're not there yet. No, we're not. Even if the Swedish EU presidency is determined to get an agreement. The Council already adopted its position in December 2022. And a few weeks later, the rapporteurs from the European Parliament's Foreign Affairs and the Industry, Research and Energy Committees presented their draft reports, suggesting some changes. Michael Gala leads the discussions within the Foreign Affairs Committee. He proposed on the one hand to enhance its incentivizing effect by tripling the budget to 1.5 billion euros. On the other hand, 
we need to use Idirpa to strengthen our first lines of defense in order to deny Putin any gains from his war of aggression against Ukraine and to deter him from further aggression. That is why we introduced a preferential scheme enabling member states to support Ukraine and Moldova through their common procurement actions, as well as for the participation of EU member states at the EU's eastern flank. The rather meagre financial incentive offered by the instrument in comparison to the announced increases in member states' defence budgets has also been criticised by defence experts, who see the instrument as a step in the right direction though an insufficient one, and want the EU to do more, and faster. One thing is clear. If Europe wants to step up military support for Ukraine and ensure its own protection in the future, there's more to win from working together at EU level than individually. As French President Emmanuel Macron said in a recent speech, we must be one war ahead. Want to know more? Check out Sebastian Klapp's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.